We're back to the Toljication Celebrity Show on the Toljication Network, powered by the Simply G Media Network. You can go to simplyg.com, simplyg.com for more information on G.J. Reynolds, the playful and powerful warrior, or my website, toltutor.net, Twitter, Toltutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. And this show is a pretty interesting uh, reality TV show for sure. And uh, so I want to welcome the program uh, from Basketball Wives, former Basketball Wives uh, reality star, Keisha Nichols. Keisha, thanks for calling. Of course. Thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm doing great. I, I uh, getting ready for the holiday. Uh, a lot of uh, hiccups after the weekend. You know, just trying to get through. <laughs> you know, countdown is coming for sure. To a little, a couple days break, couple days for relaxation. And it's nice having the schedule as owning a tutoring and consulting company because business does slow down at this time. So it's kind of really kind of you know chill out in a lot of ways. So when we talk about specifically. Again, you're 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 a jack of all trades in so many aspects. Did you always want to be an entertainer, Keisha? Well, I always wanted to be a dancer since I was four years old and started taking dance at Sherry School of Dance. Um, I didn't know that I was going to be entertaining strangers. I thought it would just be for my family. <laughs> but um, yes, I guess the answer to that is yes, because I love to dance. I love to make people happy and make them smile. And entertainment is just in my blood. So you, you basically saw you loved being on stage. There's a lot of people that thrive on that and want to entertain people and, and say, you know, uh, through through during, doing different things, this, this is the kind of stage you want to be at. So you, you had that idea, but you never thought it would be on television and, 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 and lots of other people. You just, you just enjoyed the attention and also enjoyed performing, right? Yes, exactly. I think I came out dancing. I was dancing before I was walking. I sit my family down and sing and teach them and do class and talking to the video or microphone recorder and listen to myself. So <laughs> I was always doing some sort of entertaining. Yes. So before basketball wives, did you ha- were you uh, dancing or acting or doing anything before basketball wives? Oh yes. Um, contrary to popular belief, my life did not start the day you saw me on VH1. <laughs> um, I. Danced uh, my whole life when I uh, lived in my hometown for 14 years. Then I went to um, Columbia College and got a BA in dance education. And I taught dance uh, in a public school in Columbia, South Carolina. And then I decided that I needed to move to New York because I had those lights in my eyes and just needed to go and see what the big city was about. And I've been there for 11 years now. Okay, so before that happened, basically, you were always uh, trying to make it as a, a professional dancer. So you were looking specifically to, to be involved in Broadway, or what would you say your type of dance is? Um, well, I'm trained in uh, ballet, tap, and jazz. My college was a ballet and modern school, but I really, really love the NBA dance team feel, so hip-hop, girly, um, you know, fun entertainment. I also had a dance agent block in New York, so I performed for music awards, um, you know, artists, recording artists, and, um, you know, just travel performing and also danced for a group called NBA Fan Patrol, which was uh, a group that was anything that wasn't one specific team with the NBA. So I got to do all the all-star games. I did NBA Europe Live, NBA China. So I got to travel the world um, also with the NBA. Oh, wow. So, but you were just on the dance team for the NBA, not a specific team. Uh, Yes, I danced for the New Jersey Nets for three years. And then I danced for NBA Fan Patrol for an additional four years after that. Uh, Gotcha, gotcha. So, again, that that is a, uh, and definitely looking at specifically other gigs as well throughout that time. And then why did you choose to do Basketball Wives? Was it something, hey, you know, am I really going to do a reality show? I'm sure you weren't a big fan of reality. No. Well, actually, I was a fan of it. I love to watch it. Um, But I have a dance production company called Sugar and Spice Productions. And I was working on my own reality show um, with VH1 about my dance company. And um, they talked me into doing Basketball Wives because they said, you know, once I did that show, which was very popular, and VH1's number one show in franchise history, that the world would know who I was and it would be a lot easier for me to get my own show on the air after that. 
Okay, so, so that was what talked me into doing basketball. So, so, so that was your 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 pitch, your hook. So, and so specifically enough for our listeners out there that have never seen basketball wives. What's the premise of the show? Oh, well, I think the show started out um, to cover the lives of women that were involved with or married to basketball players. Right. Um, but so strangely enough, the season that I was on, there was not a single woman on the show that was actually married to a basketball player at that time. Um, the women just, after season one and season two, the show just kind of took on a life of its own, and the characters were so popular that nobody really cared that they weren't involved with basketball players anymore, and they just became the stars. Oh, wow, okay. See, I didn't know that for sure. So you weren't involved with any basketball players on, during the show then? No, I um, was... It's been four years since my um, wedding was canceled with my ex fiance that was an NBA player. Okay, so they took people that, you know, that already the relationship was over and put them in the show. And first they were just going to show the lives of both of them. Gotcha. Gotcha. I understand completely. All right, so from that experience, uh, what did you think of the experience on the show? Uh, it was a tumultuous experience for me. I am. Um, not like the other women that were on the show, and I think that's why I was a valuable character at the time. Um, it wasn't very positive for women of color, and there was a lot of fighting and um, just not really good role models. And so um, another hook for me, um, you know, the people at VH1 said that I would have an opportunity to come on the show and show um, a positive okay. outlook someone who still actually got along with their ex um, and to show, you know, positive women of color uh, and, and, and be, you know, a role model for girls that were watching the show instead of it being always so negative. We're talking to Keisha Nichols of Basketball Wives, formerly of Basketball Wives, and uh, uh, really about her a lot of her interesting entrepreneurial ventures, and, and then we're going to talk about the uh, anti-bullying campaign as well. But first, just trying to hear, learn a little bit about the experience of uh, Basketball Wives. And so, again, I've, got, I've interviewed many reality television stars, from the Real Housewives to uh, Married to Medicine, all these different ones in and honestly, the producers set things up so that it becomes a very bad situation. Regardless if you're a good person, you get thrown in a mix of just trash talk and absolute just no holds bar. You got to protect yourself, and it becomes a very very stressful situation that people sometimes don't understand. This is reality, even though the producers have kind of spin things a different way. It's reality, correct? Yes, it was. Um, it definitely was reality. It was not a scripted show. Uh, what, was there a favorite moment on the show? Because uh, I was uh, uh, researching you right now and saw some of the YouTube stuff I wanted to have a chance to listen to. Was there a favorite mo- moment on the show? My favorite moment on the show was when they covered um, a charity benefit that I did for my girlfriend that had a brain tumor. And um, they covered it. I did a charity event. It was great. You didn't get to see a lot of it on the show, but um, they had a bonus clip that showed my girlfriend and I preparing for the event. We raised a lot of money for her, um, and the National Brain Tumor Association was part of it. And it was, unfortunately, they didn't show a lot of the positive things that we did and films, um, you know, you film thousands of hours for a one-hour show each week. Um, but there were some good things going on behind the scenes, for sure. Well, you know, and it, 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 there are good points and bad points. Sometimes the bad points are what you focus on in so many ways, but it hopefully helped take off your career even more. Can you tell me a, a little bit about why uh, the whole anti-bullying campaign? I, I think I am such a huge advocate to try to stop bullying in schools, especially cyberbullying, because it, kids are just so hurt, and, and it t- takes on its own process once you go on to adulthood where you kind of never lose some of these these uh, hurtful feelings that were developed and and how you were treated, it takes a long time to kind of recover in that way. 
Yes, it actually does. And, you know, I, I believe, you know, you're put in every situation for a reason. And I didn't experience a lot of bullying when I was younger. And I don't have any children of my own, so I wasn't aware of how prevalent bullying and cyberbullying is with our youth today. And, um, you know, like you just said, a lot of the situations on reality shows are negative. And for me, I thought that I would just go on the show and be a sweet person and show this awesome side of me. But you have to be in bad situations to show who you really are. And it took me a while to realize that. Um, But in a situation on the show, I was being bullied by um, one of the women, and we were in Tahiti. And, you know, I was away from everyone, and um, she bullied me pretty bad, took my purse, my passport, my phone, my wallet, every connection that I had to the outside world. And um, it was bad when it was happening, but it was even worse for me to watch it back on TV because you normally don't get to see what the bully is saying Mm -hmm. about you after the bullying happens. (laughs) Um, and I was blogging after every episode, and after I saw that episode, I didn't really know what I was going to say in my blog, and instead of saying anything negative about anyone on the show, I went and I educated myself, and I found out exactly what bullying was, what is a bully, why does it happen, and so my blog was an informative blog about what bullying was and how we can stop it. And after I posted that blog, Nikki Minaj just happened to see my blog and see that episode, and she reposted my blog to her 11 million followers. And now, all of a sudden, I've become an advocate against bullying, and I would not change that experience ever because I really believe that this is a platform that I'm supposed to be part of. Exactly. So from there, how are you helping stop bullying right now? Um, I am speaking in public schools in New York and in North Carolina. I'm bringing my message, teaching the kids about what bullying is exactly, how to prevent it, what to do when you see someone else being bullied, and um, just helping spread the message and also asking questions because, you know, unless the kids are really talking to you, you don't know what's going on. And a lot of times they say, you know, we do tell teachers, we do tell our parents, and nothing is done. And you know, there's still not an answer. There's not a formula to to stop it. And so I'm trying with our youth to find out a way to really stop this horrible epidemic of bullying that's going on right now. Well, definitely at the end of the show, we're going to have to ask uh, where we can find information so that they can schools can book you, but also how our listeners can help out in this process to stop bullying. Now, you also have some entrepreneurial ventures you want to share with us. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, well, I'm really excited about my newest venture. Um, I, along with a good friend of mine, Cindy Winters, she's a Broadway star. She was um, Nala, Lion King on Broadway in the national tour. And um, we are both mixed. We're both biracial, and we have created a movement and lifestyle brand called Blendiva, which is a place for girls um, and women of mixed race and multicultural backgrounds to belong. And um, our motto is Embrace Your Blend, and so it is a way for girls who are kind of floating along, not really having a place to belong, to feel like they have a community and a place to come and be proud of being a blended race tremendous I, I again that that's in a way because again people misunderstand that and they and that there is bullying that occurs because of biracial relationships and and biracial children and and also uh people of other uh nationalities that just literally you know it just becomes a a process so for girls and women to kind of connect in that way what a fantastic thing so uh there's a lot of different things you're doing Keisha, so tell us uh, where we can find all that info and learn more about you. Um, Well, my Instagram and my Twitter are my first and last name, Keisha Nichols, K-E-S-H-A-N-I-C-H-O-L-S. You can also find me on Facebook. Um, My blog is on Tumblr, and everything is with my first and last name, Keisha Nichols. 
All right, well, I'll tweet this out when it airs in all the different syndication, Keisha. It was a pleasure speaking to you, and uh, best of luck in all the different ventures you're doing, and you're really uh, paying it forward, and uh, great success in your career, and thanks for calling. Thank you so much. All right, take it, Keisha. It. Okay, bye-bye. All right, you're listening bye-bye. to Toll Education Celebrity Show on the Toll Education Network, powered by the Simply G Media Network, and we'll be back in just a moment.